opportunity to give Jesse Conweiler about her new Jewish web series, Dude, Where's My Chutzpah? Let's take a closer look. When I hear the description of believing, like, that sounds freaking rad, but I haven't done cocaine off a stripper's ass, so, you know, God hasn't saved me. To come in a Jew, what I tell you? It's the best. I don't know how you have the balls to do what you did. Do you believe in God? No. I used to, but not anymore. What I saw, how could you believe in God? It's a 3,000 year old wisdom. Are we really gonna argue with 3,000 year old wisdom? Well, yeah. My bubby passed away and she left me a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. In order to get the money, okay. she says I have to live Jewish for a year. I don't really have any kind of Jewish identity. You were born as a Jew and you need to figure out what that means. All these dudes just keep telling me to have babies. I want Boy. some pita in my stomach. I don't want a baby. Don't do the whole mitzvah. Do one mitzvah. One mitzvah. So have like half a baby? Huh? It's not half a baby. That's where your soul is. Go find your soul. That's what it means to find your chutzpah and your Jewishness. I see the light going on in the inside of you. No, that's just you know? gas. So tell us a little bit uh, why you decided to create this series. Oh, oh me? You're talking to me? Um, so I got the idea. Um, I had heard about the Six Points Fellowship. This is like an artist's dream, okay? Here's money. Here's money. Go create work, but it has to be about being Jewish. So I totally panicked. Um, and I was like, I'm not, I don't know anything about being Jewish. Like, I eat bagels. I made out with an Israeli soldier on birthright. Like, I, that's about it. That's, like, my biggest Jewish identity, you know. I'm still living off my bar mitzvah money. But I didn't have a proactive sense of Jewish identity. So I really thought about if I'm going to, if I'm going to do this, you know, if I'm going to apply to this grant, do this project, I really want to address that question of, like, what does it even mean to be Jewish? And what does it mean to have a Jewish identity? And as a 27-year-old woman who's, you know, crazy, but like, I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, I've never like needed Judaism to save me or, you know, I've always had a sense of self. So what, what, you know, what is Judaism going to do for me? And what am I going to do for it? Like, does it even want me? And there's all, you know, questions, like all Jewish questions led to more questions. Um, and this eventually became the, the series of Dude, Where's My Chutzpah? Was my, is, is my attempt to, you know, have that true, authentic exploration of what it means to have a Jewish identity. And it wasn't, you know, I, I refused to have any kind of bullshit message about it. The goal wasn't like that I turn into this crazy super Jew. The goal was the, was the journey. One of the things that um, I really loved uh, about your segments is that you, you can see the heart. You, know, like you have a lot of comedy in it, um, even from like the, the first scene. Um, where you're kind of like, you know, whatever, I'm here, you know, my, my bubby, she would love to have, like, you know, me in the room with a Jewish, uh, Jewish doctor. But you can, you can sense that, like, your, your bubby was, like, really important to you. Um, how do you balance comedy and, like, that an emotion that you don't want to show but you want to show? Yeah, absolutely, totally. Well, I think it's a very... You know, in doing so much research for this project, of course, I looked back and I studied, you know, one of the one of the really interesting things about it was I I myself found out that I was so Jewish and I didn't even really realize it. I was already so Jewish. And a huge part of that was in my creative process and how I looked at the world through this comedic lens. And to me, it's never about, in my experience, it's never about going for the joke. It's never, the punchline is never, you know, the goal here. It's just the lens in which I saw this experience and the way that I see my life. And I think a lot of Jewish humor is really dedicated to is kind of laughing through the tears and that line of comedy and tragedy and how we cope, you know, how I deal with my own Bobby's death in real life. You know, there are so many just crazy, surreal moments that to me, it's like, if you're not going to laugh, you're going to cry. 
Um, and it can be both. And kind of treading on that line is, is the interesting place. I think that people are so, you know, it's like, okay, well, this is a comedy and this is a tragedy. And that's not how my life is. It's always a bit of both. So kind of interweaving um, those sections, it just really came naturally. It just came from my, like I said, my own lens and how I see the world. There are some really classic lines uh, in, in, in this series. I mean, some of the things that I was just like, that is just brilliant. You know, that's just, <laughs> how does that, like, come into it? You know, when you're, when you're talking to the rabbi in, in, in your, uh, when you first come in to meet the rabbi and you're like, oh, you know, here to meet the rabbi, and, and it's, it's, it's a one rabbi, but you don't even make that connection. And you're like, oh, right, sorry. You know, like, <laughs> like, um, what, 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 how did you decide to, like, put uh, the certain scenes together? Um, well, Aaron, when you're a complete idiot in real life, it really is easy to just translate over. Um, so I, I had a huge research process. One of the really the huge gifts of the grant was, you know, I got the grant and I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to make a web series. I basically thought it was going to be like Bagels the Musical. You know, I was like scratching the surface and being like, okay, I'm going to be Jewish. Like, how do I do this? I can put this film together and just kind of do it really quickly. Like, I'm used to making my films. And this was, I, I was allowed a research process. So I'm in Los Angeles. I started, you know, taking Kabbalah classes. I went to the Jewish Home for the Aging and volunteered and started hanging out there. I called it Holocaust Survivor Speed Dating. I would go to the Holocaust Museum, listen to the survivors, buy them, you know, take them out for a cup of coffee afterwards. I interviewed probably over 25 rabbis in the Los Angeles area from all different sects and backgrounds um, and, and eventually turned that into a podcast. But I really was, again, trying to have this authentic journey and process. And through that, you know, all of these experiences are really directly inspired from what happened in those six months. So meeting the rabbi and going to the Orthodox home, I mean, you can't, I kept just saying, you know, you can't make this stuff up. And I didn't really have to, you know. Um, how, did you, how did you get connected to the Six Point Fellowship? Um, I have a, one of my uh, mentors out here actually recommended that I apply and I heard about it and yeah, so I went in and I applied and you know, the, the, the really crazy thing about it is it's really the first time in my life where I've really been, I've really been made to believe that like art is important and it makes a difference, you know, and to have that kind of support through this process. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do it any other way to have. I mean, it's a fellowship of people from all different kinds of artists and backgrounds and the support that they give you. And I'm really not just like blowing smoke up your ass. Like really, you know, it's, it's been a two year process. So the support that they've given me, but also allowed me to go to these really scary places, you know, both in my head and literally like going to the West bank in Israel. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been it's been an incredible um, support system for me to be able to go and, and make this, and I'm really grateful to it, you know. One of the classic parts uh, of the segment is that you dress up as a kosher pickle, and um, you know, oh, just I'm, wait till you get to Israel, honey. You haven't uh, seen that yet. I'm I'm getting excited already. <laughs> uh, I hear West Bank. I can only imagine what you're gonna do. Um, but there there's certain traditional things that that come up even when you're taking pictures of like you doing Jewish, you know, and taking a picture of the, you know, the cheese on, on, on your pastrami, you're like, is that kosher? You know, like, you're like yeah, 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 you know, that's uh, you know, we're a bargain. Um, there, there's a lot of traditionalness into it, um, but also adding your flavor as an artist. Um, what, how do you decide to put in um, certain things into your segments? Right. Well, I, I mean, to kind of set up the series, I really felt like I needed to address all of these stereotypes because there was stuff that I was playing into that I didn't even really realize. I mean, I grew up, you know, I grew up in a place where they would throw pennies at me in high school. And I'm talking about my friends. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and I would just joke around right back. And I think we kind of play into these stereotypes, again, kind of um, defensively, you know, there was nothing that I needed to be proactive about, um, about my Jewish identity. So I would kind of let other people, whether it be rabbis or, you know, non-Jews or Jews, I would let other people tell me what it meant to be Jewish. And I think that's where the disconnect started for me, was like, 
all right, I have to, you know, because I'm Jewish, I can't eat this, this, and this, and this. I can't do this. I can't be with this person. I can't go there. I have to believe this. And that's bullshit. I mean, there's nothing else in my life that I haven't come to a place of belief on my own terms. So why would my religious practice or why would my spiritual identity or why would my ethnicity even be any different? And so I was trying to really, in the series, I'm really trying to address those stereotypes head on and see what's true about them, what's not so true about them, how did they come to be, um, why are they important, you know, I'm really trying to, you know, solve world peace here. Yeah, totally, <laughs> clearly. Um, you, know, you, you talked a lot about sort of like your own learning experience and, and diving into your own Judaism. Did anything like stand out as you went um, through the process? Yeah, I mean, there's so many things, but I would say, I would say it's really this idea that, you know, I always saw Judaism as, and like cue Sesame Street music, but like I always saw Judaism as like all of this stuff that you can't do. To be Jewish means that you can't, like I said, you can't do all this. And I really, you know, looking back, not even that far back, I really discovered Judaism that was, you know, spiritual and sexy and rebellious and really whatever the hell I want it to be. And I really feel like Judaism, it is from the inside out. You know, it doesn't, let's like take a step back from all of these ways that we're told we need to feel and these ways that we need to practice and really look at how, for me, like what is the spark inside of me and how am I going to use that spark? How, how is that going to manifest in the rest of the world? And to me, that, that, makes, that makes a Judaism that I'm proud to be a part of. And there's a lot of adversity and there's a lot, you know, you know, there's so many different sects and every, you know, and for every Torah for every line of the Torah, there's five billion lines that argue for and against it. And and that's the beauty of it, is that it is an argument and an active conversation. And once it stops being that, then I really think we're in trouble. So I think this series for me is really just my own commentary, you know? I mean, you definitely have your own flavor when, when it comes to um, embodying your, 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 the, the Jewishness around you and trying to explain like what it means to you and where you want to go to get this gift. Um, what, what are you hoping audiences will take away uh, from the segments? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think a big thing is, I mean, my, I try not to get too preachy with my, you know, whatever people want to take away, they can, you know what I mean? Um, that's kind of their own relationship and journey. But I, I would say for me, I would really hope that people would, you know, one, look beyond some of the stereotypes, again, that is set up in Judaism, you know, specifically with the Orthodox community. I know just in my experience going in, you know, there was so much, there was just doors blowing wide open every single day. And I'll just tell you one brief little story, you know, as a tried and true feminist going into these homes, you know, you have these pre preconceived you know, notions of what these Orthodox women go through. And, you know, I said to this Orthodox woman, she's got 10 kids, you know, she's got three hanging off her breast and, you know, she's just managing everything. Everything's crazy. And I was like, you know, dude, this is, this is awesome for you, but like, I'm a feminist. Like I could never get into this. And she looks at me, you know, as Moishi's like mid suck. And she's like, you know, I'm a feminist too. And that just kind of blew <clears throat> my mind. Cause it's like, well, yeah, you are, you know, who am I? who says that my definition of what it means to be a feminist or what it means to believe in God or what it means to be, you know, it's, it's kind of everybody's own personal relationship. Now there's lots of controversy that go into that. And, you know, there's a lot of hate and there's a lot of um, nastiness, I think between Jews and how certain, everybody wants to be in each other's business. And it's not really anybody else's concern how, how you do Judaism, you know, or if you do Judaism or not. And so I'm kind of trying to, again, speak to my personal experience and all the good that I saw along the way and all the controversy too. You know, I'm not, this is, a, this is real. There's a lot of bad shit that I saw too, but I, mean, I think that's part of it. That's part of the process. So how many segments do you already have uh, filmed? So there's 11 episodes. Um, yes, we have three more in LA and then I go to Israel and then stuff gets beyond kosher, so to speak. <laughs> stuff gets crazy. Uh, and 
um, as you're going through this process, do you have like your your end vision? Like, what's your hope uh, for this web series? Do you want it to get picked up by some, by like an HBO or something like that? Like, what? Were you a producer? All right. <laughs> what, what, what's the, what's the dream? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I would hope for it to get visibility in whatever shape that takes form. I'm just, I'm dying, you know, I just want people to see it and, and put it out there and kind of see how it does. And I think this journey and my kind of character experiencing it all translates into a lot of different mediums. And, you know, I'm working on a, a sort of sequel right now where I go into different subcultures in Los Angeles. So I go into like the black community and the Hispanic community and the Filipino community, you know, as my character trying to kind of put myself out there and almost like let go of myself in order to find out who I am, so to speak, and take that journey. And I think the theme, you know, the theme through all of this is really to expose my vulnerability to the world. And I think comedy, I think all that stuff, the, the base of that is really about just letting yourself be vulnerable, which is Terri at least for me, completely terrifying and horrible. What was the most challenging part uh, of filming and getting into your character? The dresses. Oh my gosh. Spanx are my best friend. I <laughs> didn't like, skip lunch to fit in the dresses. Um, I would say, yeah, I guess just the hardest part is kind of, you know, you start with this like, kernel idea in your head and kind of knowing, you know, when to let go and kind of, and give yourself into the process. And for me, there's such a fine line between my work and my life and everything is just a big hot mess. So I would say just kind of trusting in, in the process and, and giving over to that. And I think the more that I do it, the more I get comfortable with it. But that's where the real magic happens, I think, with all art is it's not really about me anymore, you know? It's about it's about the project, and that's when it gets really exciting, I think. How did you come up with the title? Dude, I don't know. I literally just, like, said it. It was like, oh, I need something Jewy, and chutzpah's always been, I don't know, I've always just, I'm really into the chutzpah. I'm really into stuff that people are like, isn't that a bad thing? It's like, mm, not by my book, honey. So, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude, dude always works. Dude is, yeah, exactly. is essential. Yeah, the, yeah. In one of the, I always do it like whenever I forget the cute guy's name. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, there's a uh, going back to the Chutzpah. There was a a great line when you had uh, the rabbi uh, saying to you, like when Abraham uh, downed his inner inner Chutzpah. I was like. That's great, you know, like that because it was true. You know, it's true. Like you had to be able to stand up, and be like, "That's this is this is what I'm doing." Let's think about like the original OG Heeb, right? This is one of the things. This is to answer your question. It's like, what's surprising? You know, it's like I thought of okay. So when you're going back, like going back to the source here and the original, and he was a little punk. You know what I mean? He was a little loud mouth. Like everyone's just like. Everyone else is like, you know, I guess I'll just like idol worship because like everyone else is doing it and like I don't really want to like rock the butt, you know? And I could just like see Abraham like, excuse me, excuse me, no, 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 hell no. Like this is not working, you know? It's like that's who we come from. It's in our blood, you know? And there's a purpose to that. And I think there's – it's my at least like – honor to be from that lineage and I never want to stop asking questions and causing trouble and being loud. Mm -mm. No, thank you. It's the way to roll. What does your family yeah. think about this? <laughs> I haven't told them yet. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're quelling. I think, uh, you know, I was raised a super reformed Jew in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I went, like I said, I went through the motions and got a bar mitzvah and everything. But, um, you know, I think a whole part of this was really just breaking away from, you know, my parents' house and ideas and everything and, and trying to figure, like I said, figure it out for myself. So they're, they're proud, but I think it's also, it's my, you know, it's very much my journey. And, you know, my grandmother passed away as I was shooting this and that just kind of took on another layer, obviously, um, 
but I think she would be really, I mean, I know she's really proud, you know, I, she, she, she taught me to make noise, so. As you can see, Do Where's My Chutzpah is a fantastic Jewish web series which brings Jewishness to the forefront. This is Aaron Herman, thank you for watching.